it's Jane from Janda's Reviews, and I thought I would do my faves and fails today for the month of September. Um, it's been kind of a weird month. Um, my makeup has been fairly light unless I'm um, filming a video, which you guys have seen those looks, and a lot of them aren't very um, involved or super makeup-y. So, let me tell you what I have been using consistently. Now, I love the combination of these two serums. Um, this is the Shiseido Vital Perfection Radiance Serum. I put a squirt of this in my hand, which is more than enough on its own to do my entire face. But I also like combining it with um, the Glow Recipe Plum Perfect Hyaluronic Acid Serum. And um, I pump one, one pump only of each onto my fingertips, rub them together, and then spread it all across my face and my neck. I love the hydrating feel of the combination and the silkiness that it leaves behind on my skin. Um, I didn't use it today, but I have been using it fairly consistently and um, you know, I still have lots of texture here. That's just sun damage. And the pores, they don't actually shrink, but they do appear smaller. So I think and my overall skin tone, usually I'm quite red through here and it's it's slowly lessened. I still, you know, have more redness here than I do anywhere else on my face, but it's significantly lighter than it has been in months past. So um, I'm gonna say it's the combination of these two products together. Um, kind of on the same note, but a different thing. I don't mention it often, but this is what I have on my lips today. This is the Nivea Milk and Honey um, Shea Butter Lip Balm. It's colorless. It's fantastic. It's extremely hydrating. It's very smoothing on the lips. It's just extremely comfortable and enjoyable to wear. Um, they also have one, um, the Blackberry, which is a really beautiful, um, kind of a plum tint. It's a, an extremely dark mauve, not quite a purple, but that pinky kind of purpley tint is beautiful. The other combination that I have really been loving lately is um, I use one of two products, which I forgot to grab the other ones. Here we go. All right, now I'm ready. <clears throat> On my brows, I have found a combination that I really like, and I have nothing on my brows today. This is how they naturally would look. Um, what I have been doing is either going in with the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil in medium brown, or Winky Lux Uni Brow, which is a universal shade. And what I've been doing with these, and they are very different shaped pencils too, by the way, but the formula consistency is very similar. They're not um, overly emollient, but they're not so dry that they tug and drag on your skin a lot. Um, what I do is I basically fill in the shape of the brow that I want, brush it through lightly, and then I go in with one of three this month. <laughs> micro brow pencils all in medium brown. Um, I have the NYX micro brow, I have the Wet n Wild micro brow, and um, I received in a subscription box um, that I've been using over the past month, the Bella Pierre micro brow. Like I said, these are all in medium brown. And then I go in where I've got the bald and thinning places and put in um, hair-like strokes with the micro brow pencil. And usually, um, I will take a light dusting of powder and go over the finished brow so it doesn't look shiny. But I got to thinking, you know, it sometimes it makes my brows look almost grayish, gray toned. So I thought, why don't I use the brow powder that I have? 
and I've been using this brush here. Um, it is, who's this by? I do not know. There's not a name on it other than um, these hearts. I think this is an Ipsy brush. I'm pretty sure it came from the Betty Boop collection. But anyway, it's just a very um, large, fluffy blending brush. And I just tap the very top of it into this dark brown shade and then go over the finished brow. And that cuts down the um, shininess of the pencils. And it also leaves them brown and not kind of a grayish brown from, you know, the translucent powder that I typically would use. I've really been loving that combo. It's it's very natural. Um, I haven't consistently used the same eyeshadow palettes or bronzers, but um, in the last month, I've received three different bronzers, and these are the ones that I've been using. Well, last two months. I think I got this in the previous month's BoxyCharm. But anyway, um, I have been using all of these three uh, when I do use a bronzer. And I've also been using um, the Iconic London one. Sometimes I will just go in the hollow, the crease, and darken that up. And that will be all I do to my eyes other than a coat of mascara. But when I have used an eyeshadow palette, I have been using this one by, um, is this Beauty Crop? Yes, the Beauty Crop Espresso Yourself. Um, I just, I like all the different tones of brown that are in here. It's all brown and cream. I mean, you've got one coppery shade right there, but the rest are consistently brown and cream just like you know your coffee shops so that's what i have been using a lot of um same mascaras that i always use same moisturizers there's not really a whole lot of difference there so not a lot to talk about with faves and fails i don't think i have let me let me check over here oh yeah i do have a couple of fails <laughs> Yeah, um, let's see here. I've talked about that. Okay, L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer. Not the glowy version, just the regular L'Oreal Infallible Concealer. This is very drying on my under eyes and this shade happens to be um, too dark, as you can see. Uh, this is, makes my under eyes look crepier and saggy and just awful. So, definitely not a fan of that one. Um, I also, on a random whim, um, at my local Dollar Tree, they carry L.A. Colors. Tons and tons of L.A. Colors. My hair's air drying and I keep getting little strands sticking in my face and driving me crazy. Um, they carry all kinds of products from LA Colors. They don't carry many other um, colored makeup brands, but they always have tons of LA Colors. So I saw this little display for plumping gloss. So I picked one up. The shade is really pretty. I like it. It's really, I mean, it's a beautiful, you know, pinky nude. It smells delicious. You put it on your lips and it's instant fire. <laughs> I don't know if it would have plumped. I couldn't leave it on because it hurt so bad. I had to take the shit off immediately. And then my only other fail would be, um, I think it was Frugalista maybe on YouTube that uh, recommended the Joa Beauty Concealer. And uh, it's supposed to be you know targeted for dark circles the shade match is good um i do not like you know that it's a twist up with the little spongy thing although the sponge is supposed to be antimicrobial so it inhibits the growth of bacteria on it but still it just kind of grosses me out 
but this doesn't do anything. Apparently my dark circles are far more um, purpley than hers are. It, it just, it was really bad. My under eye circles were just kind of a gray shade and still very much there. Uh, the formula of this is really nice. I do like that, but it's just, it doesn't have enough coverage. Um, you still get extremely dark circles. I don't have um, corrector on underneath, and this is supposed to have correcting qualities, but even when I combined it with a corrector, it wasn't enough coverage. Um, you could still see my under eye circles. They were um, far more prevalent than even, you know, I don't have corrector on. All I've got is a little bit of concealer, and they were way darker than this. So just, eh, didn't work out, but that's okay. The other thing I thought I would mention that I rarely do is um, what brushes I'm loving because I kind of cycle through what makeup brushes I'm using. Um, but this month for my face, <laughs> speaking of under eyes, I've really been loving using the Wet n Wild. Um, does this have a number on it? I don't think it does. It's just their flat eyeshadow brush large flat eyeshadow brush and what I do is I'll put this in um, the pot of corrector rub it on you know where I need the correction then I'll go back in and you know dip it in the pot of concealer if I'm using that style of concealer and dab that on then I will let me see if I can find it yeah there it is this one by Visanti I think it is. Yes, Visanti. And it doesn't say what the brush was meant for, but I use it as a concealer brush because it does look so much like my e.l.f. Um, concealer brush. So, um, after I have placed it basically, you know, where I need it the most at, I will blend it out and smooth the edges with this brush. Um, <clears throat> and then I go in with this last concealer brush by e.l.f. And I'll dip this into um, my under eye powder, swirl it around, and then just, you know, pat it all over my eye. And then once it's all there, you know, that's when I'll do the sweeping motions to make sure I've hit everywhere so I don't get um, concealer creasing and gathering in the little wrinkles and pebbly texture that I have on my inner eye. But really been loving those brushes for that. Uh, on my face, <laughs> I have been using the Complex Culture um, Bronze. I think this is Press and Set is the name of the brush. Really love Complex Culture brushes. They're just, they're owned by Ipsy. They're a sister company. But um, they are made extremely well. They're got a good weight to them um i've brushed the or brushed them washed them multiple times well multiple times a week sometimes but anyway um after washing they still retain their shape their softness i haven't lost bristles they're just a really great and i'm sorry that these are all filthy um these are all just they're really great brushes but i've been loving this with my bronzer and then I've been using their um, large powder brush here um, to go over my face with um, the Kiko Milano baked powder, radiant fusion baked powder that I like. And, you know, just dust that all over to set everything, finish it, blur my imperfections. And um, blushes. I have been using a lot of cream and serum blushes lately. So I have been loving my e.l.f. Now this one is, uh, the name has rubbed off, kind of. Foundation Blurring Brush. But um, I'm not positive that that's, it's just a smaller version of this one, which is the Ultimate Blending Brush. And um, I've just, I've really been loving these style brushes for my blush. 
I, um, I either will go in with my fingertips and, you know, put the blush where I need it. Um, if it's a really light colored blush, I will swirl this around and then apply it. But mostly I've been applying with my fingertips and then, you know, blending everything out with this brush. It's fairly inexpensive. I'll just make some really great quality brushes as well. They're very soft. The handles are not as heavy as like, say, the Complex Culture brushes, but they're not super light. They don't feel super cheap, even though they are extremely cheap. Um, like I said, they're soft. The bristles don't fall out. You don't get a lot of shedding. Uh, they wash up great. They're just all around a really good brush. And then lastly, I thought I would go over um, these eye brushes that I've really been loving this month. Typically what I do, as you all know, <laughs> is I'll go in with a very, very light um, brownish to taupe kind of um, crease color for my transition. This is a blending brush by Scone Cosmetics. Got this in an Ipsy bag back when I had the $10 Ipsy bag years ago. I think it's been three, four years ago now. Really beautiful brush, very soft. Um, it's a large blending. And I've been putting that, you know, starting it out in, you know, the deepest part of my socket and then blending it upwards. Then I have been using this brush and this one. I believe is Luna Magic. Yes, this is from Luna Magic. I got this in a set. I'm pretty sure I unboxed it here on my channel. I'm not sure if it was BoxyCharm or Ipsy, but um, this was a set of four or five brushes. Um, I really love this one for packing on color onto my lid. And then when I deepen up, the outer corners of my eye here. I have been using this brush from Morphe and I'm pretty sure this one came again in a subscription box. Um, it was a set of four or five Morphe eye brushes and this is a small blending brush as you can see. And um, I will just, you know, I place the color on with the very tip of it and then I blend it all out diffuse it, you know, kind of marry it with the brush or eye colors that are already there. And then from Do Color, um, this is part of their, it's a set, I think I mentioned this, I don't know, in one of my mini hauls. It's an Amazon purchase. Um, I forget, there was a bunch of brushes included in this one. But this is also a large blending brush. And I typically use this one for dipping into a cream or a light taupe color. And then I just buff out the edges of all my makeup just so everything, you know, kind of blends into a skin tone down to my actual skin. So there's not a real evident harsh line anywhere. And um, these are just, they're good quality as well. They're not super expensive. They're not as dense as, um, what am I trying to say? Some of my other blending brushes are uh, have more bristles, but this is not a floppy, crappy brush. It's really great for what I want it. Um, I want it to, you know, diffuse the edges, and it does an amazing job of that. So, that being said, those are my faves and my fails. Um, I have a few empties, but I think I'm just going to wait. Maybe next month when I have a few more, I'll mention those. Um, there's just a little box over here, and there's only like two or three things. So um, we will cover those next month. Stay tuned. I've got more content coming your way. And if you don't mind, why don't you pop over to Instagram and check out my posts over there. I would appreciate it if you subscribe to both. Follow, whatever. And uh, I hope you're having a great day. It's kind of overcast in Kentucky today, but that's okay. It's not raining, so I'm happy. Why don't you all stay happy, stay healthy, and make good choices. Bye.